this video is for the individual that's trying to figure out which option to leverage if they're offered a pension plan and when they're nearing retirement, whether to take a lump sum pension option and leverage those dollars uh, towards more of a, a personalized goal and set that up for a retirement need or leveraging the income streams that, that pensions provide and seeing if that is a, a better avenue. So to take a step back, a pension plan is a defined benefit plan that an employee is given uh, based upon what sort of employment, what sort of employer that may be offering that. So uh, as an example, I, I use an example of my grandfather a lot. Uh, my grandfather, he worked for the, uh, he was an elevator mechanic for the city of New York. And he worked for X amount of years, I believe it was 25, 30 years uh, for New York City. And then after he hit those X amount of years of service, he was offered a benefit. So basically, it allowed him to focus on his job, to stay loyal to his employer, which was you know, ultimately the city. And in return, the municipality was making investments on the back end to produce him a lifetime income stream when he hit that ideal retirement date, uh, meaning you know X amount of years of service, which was you know, 25, 30 years worth of service. So whenever I say define benefit, be mindful that basically if you're working for an employer or a specific entity that's giving you a defined benefit plan known as a pension plan, they're defining exactly what your benefit will be as opposed to what majority of individuals experience, which is known as a defined contribution plan, such as 401ks, 403bs, uh, 457 plans, thrift savings plans, different things like that, that are essentially an individual or an employee is placing money aside, kind of think of it like a bucket in a 401k account. They're placing monies aside, they're making contributions, they're getting an employer match, and the combination between the contributions and the match are going in one side of the bucket. And then the other side is all based on risk and really rate of return based upon the investment options that they choose. So this is why individuals that have defined benefit plans are typically in a better situation because they know, okay, if I'm working for this, this entity for X amount of years, once I hit that date of service where I want to retire, there's at least going to be some sort of you know, monthly income that will come to me in that future date. Um, so, you know, back to the example of my grandfather, he was, uh, or basically what was told to me was he was walking out the door right when, right before his retirement, and he already signed the paperwork to say single life pension option. So what does that mean? What does single join period certain mean? Well, single life just means that it's going to be covered for one individual. So you might see a, a you know monthly dollar amount. Let's say if it's ten thousand dollars that the person's getting paid monthly for a single life uh, income option, that might just be for that that employee only, as opposed to a joint life pension option, which might be seven thousand dollars. But this will and this will be seven thousand dollars monthly. But this will cover that that individual and his spouse and his or her spouse. So it's a reduced benefit because the company is producing or is providing a lifetime benefit for two lives as opposed to doing it on one life. So obviously there's more risk for the entity that, that's producing this income stream. So therefore, they're not going to give you as substantial of a benefit uh, for the single life option. So in my grandfather's situation, he was walking out the door. My grandmother stopped and said, oh, what's in your hand? He's like, oh, you know, I just, I, I, you know, I filled out the retirement thing. And there was a huge fight that took place because he he basically checkmarked the, the single life option instead of doing the joint option. And it was a really good thing. It was really a blessing in disguise guys that she stopped him because he ended up only living to age 69 and she ended up living well past her 80s where if you know th she, he would have walked out the door yes they would have received more income for those first few years and then when he passed away she would have, would have not received any sort of income um, you know going forward basically all the income would have stopped because it would have only been on that single life so that's why you want to be very careful when you're when you're choosing your benefits and making sure that you know, you're really you know going to the drawing board and I know everybody thinks they're going to live forever but you know in reality do you want to make sure that your spouse is covered God forbid if you were to pass away doesn't make mathematical sense to take 
take the joint option, um, you know, and, and, and make sure that you have that peace of mind that, okay, you're going to have incomes, you know, coming to both of you guys, you know, for the rest of your lives until the second spouse passes away. And then a third option is a period certain option where it might say, okay, they're going to give you X amount of benefit. Um, let's say, you know, $5,000 per month. And then this will be guaranteed until for, let's say, the next 20 years. So it might be lifetime with period certain. So this says if the person passes away in, let's say, year 15, there's still now five more years worth of payments to beneficiaries because there's a specific period certain that that was set up in there. But if this person passes away in year 21, as an example, and it was only for a 20-year period certain, then the beneficiaries receive nothing. So this is why you want to be very careful when choosing these pension options, because it could really hurt you. It could really help you or it could really hurt you, especially because you worked your entire life to get to this point, to get to this benefit. And, you know, God forbid something happens to you, your family could suffer dearly uh, by making that wrong decision. So in its most simplistic form, a single life and a joint life option, income stops upon death. So this is different than, let's say, if somebody had a million dollar, you know, 401k account, and they're pulling out 50 grand per year from this, and they're pulling out the money's pulling out the money's pulling out the money's pulling out the money's, let's just say all things being equal, there was no gains, there was no losses, you know, with this sort of account, and this person lives for 10 years, they would have pulled out 500 grand worth of their million dollars. But then if they passed away, 500,000 would be left over to beneficiaries because this is ultimately, you know, the, the bucket of money that's sitting there. With a pension plan, it's different. If somebody chose a single life option and all of a sudden they only live for a couple of months and they pass away, well, now the beneficiaries receive nothing. Or let's say you have a joint life option, one spouse passes away, and then, you know, shortly after, you know, a couple of years later, the second spouse passes away, the beneficiaries receive nothing. So this is why, you know, you just want to be careful with, with how you're setting this up, or you might want to look towards this avenue of leveraging a lump sum option, where rather than giving producing some sort of income stream, they'll say, hey, uh, if you want to forego your income payment, we will give you a lump sum of like in this example, $1 million of a payout that now you could take these monies and invest it on your own and create your own income strategy. But we're now, you know, basically taking it, we're washing your, our hands uh, you know, clear of you because you chose the, the lump sum option. We do not have to pay you a monthly income stream. So this is why, you know, you just want to be very careful. And there's, there's a lot of, you know, really neat mechanisms that you could leverage if you're utilizing the lump sum option, but then sometimes it, it really hurts you if you utilize that lump sum option. So let me give you some examples of this and some of the problems that occur. And it really comes down to what you're trying to accomplish with your specific situation. So everyone's situation is different. Are you trying to maximize your income? If so, does it make more mathematical sense to leverage the income stream that's going to be produced by the pension? Or does it make more mathematical sense to take the lump sum option, take a portion of what that lump sum dollar amount is, place it into a type of personal pension plan. You could leverage insurance uh, companies like a longevity insurance, such as an annuity, and then have that annuity produce you the income that is that is needed throughout retirement. So as an example, if let's say, you know, an individual is going to be receiving, you know, sixty thousand dollars of income or five thousand dollars every single month by leveraging the pension option, or they're getting a million dollar lump sum option as a buyout option. Well, rather than just take the sixty thousand dollars every single year, an individual could utilize this one million dollars, stick it in an IRA account. Out of that IRA account, they create a, a separate IRA account that would be set up with like a longevity insurance, like a like a type of IRA annuity with an income rider. And maybe out of that one million dollars, it's going to cost five hundred thousand to produce that same sixty thousand dollars of cash flow. And now the other portion of the IRA could be sitting in a whole multitude of different things. So that remaining 500,000 from the original $1 million because this 500 grand basically is accomplishing the retirement income need and this is set up as some sort of, you know, safety net for income. This other 500,000 can now be leveraged towards investments or growth or, you know, safe accumulation or uh, you know, whatever that that specific need emergency, whatever that specific need might be. So with this, you know, excess monies, this person could leverage maybe 200,000 into risky investments, 
maybe two hundred thousand into safe accumulation, you know, related investments, and then a hundred thousand towards some sort of emergency need or, um, you know, uh, so, some other you know fixed type uh, related account. It really, just depends upon you know their specific situation. They could also leverage a portion of these dollars to produce uh, you know p- potentially a, a larger inheritance, and maybe say, okay, two hundred thousand will be growing for investments. The other two hundred thousand will grow for safe accumulation, and then this one hundred thousand could be uh, structured a specific way to produce a type of tax-free life insurance policy that will you know give an additional three hundred grand of tax-free death benefit. So you know what you're doing is you're you're, you're being more flexible with your options. So you understand that with a with a regular pension plan, it's just saying, okay, we're going to give you lifetime income stream. When you're able to have access to that lump sum option, now it allows you to to really cherry pick what you want to do with these monies and make sure that it's structured in, in a proper way. So there's not going to be a one size fits all type solution. It might be, you know, rolling it over into an IRA and then from that IRA position, then you're creating, you know, three or four separate IRAs from that original, you know, one million dollar lump sum or three hundred thousand lump sum, whatever that is, to accomplish your needs successfully. So this is where you just want to be careful and you don't want to create the wrong strategy. You want to make sure that the strategy is specific to, you know, obviously what your needs are. So like as an example, let's say somebody was so, you know, adamant to to go towards that, you know, uh, income stream pension option, but you have a husband and a wife and they, they you know, the they're looking at the nice shiny object that says, okay, this is going to give me $10,000. I feel like I'm going to live a long time. And they convince their spouse, okay, you know, let's just go with the single life option and we'll gamble on my life. Well, if that person's wrong, then you know, the the remaining spouse is shit out of luck. They're they're going to be screwed. They're they're only going to be able to really rely on social security income and then whatever assets that they've that they've accumulated and they lose out on this, you know, obviously that that income stream that will constantly be coming to them. If let's say they go with the joint option, well, they understand that they're going to be, you know, surrendering three thousand dollars worth of benefit. So they come at a crossroads and they say, well, okay, seven thousand will at least give us some of that peace of mind, but ten thousand dollars looks really nice. You know, what's what's a you know a proper solution for this? And this is where somebody could leverage a, a pension maximization strategy, where they could have a they could take the single life option, and it really just depends upon if this person's insurable, but you could utilize uh, like a tax-free uh, death benefit uh, or max death benefit life insurance policy. And let's say that that life insurance policy is $1,000 per month, and that would give the individual $500,000 of life insurance coverage of a, of a tax-free, of a lump sum tax-free death benefit. So if let's say you have, you know, single life individual A and their spouse is, you know, individual B, they're taking the single life option. They're able to net. Well, if we take ten thousand minus the one thousand for the insurance premium, they're receiving a net of nine thousand dollars every single month, which is obviously higher than the seven thousand dollar joint option. So they're able to net a positive, you know, two thousand dollars every single month of just extra income. God forbid if individual A passes away too soon, well, then individual B would receive a $500,000 lump sum inheritance, you know, tax-free inheritance because of the life insurance. If let's say this individual, uh, uh, you know, individual A uh, is living, 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 and then all of a sudden, you know, uh, spouse B passes away, well, now that individual A could just cancel the life insurance and then they'll have a step up of $10,000 of their lifetime income stream. If let's say both of them keep living and living and living, then they're just netting this two thousand dollars every single month, and you know even if they passed away pretty close to each other, it's not going to hinder that individual B upon individual A's death. So you know I, I hope that that portion makes sense. I don't mean to be you know sloppy on the screen, but little tricks, little you know nuances to these plans could result in thousands upon more thousands, uh, thousands upon more dollars in your retirement of retirement income to live the life that that you really plan on living. Um, you know and, and leveraging the pension streams the, the proper way. The common mistake that's made is just going into it blindly. Um, you know, not looking at the math behind the things. And this is what we help out with. So at any point in time, if you have specific questions regarding your pension income streams, uh, whether it makes sense to take the single life income option or you want to do the, the lump sum option, feel free to call our 1-800 number. It's 1-800-566-1002 and just reference this video and we'll have uh, you know an individual uh, reach out to you and, and try to see, uh, you know, to, to customize your specific situation, at least lead you, you know, to that correct path. 
Um, you know, if if let's say an individual doesn't look at what this lump sum option is, or they see this nice shiny object of you know four hundred thousand dollar lump sum option, but with a pension income stream, they could receive ten thousand dollars of income. Well, you have to look at the math behind it. You have to look at what the cash flow is and whether it makes mathematical sense to take this lump sum or whether that's shooting themselves in the foot. Because let's say if they take the lump sum option and then on the personal side, there's no you know longevity insurance. There's no sort of annuity or, or lifetime income stream that could come to them for $10,000 of income. Well, then it might make more sense to forego the lump sum option and just go specifically with the uh, with the income option. And, and whether that's set up with a pension maximization strategy or, or whatever that, that case might be, it really depends upon if somebody's single, if somebody is married, if they want to leave a, a type of legacy to their children or, you know, to, to a charity, you know, all these all these little factors come into play. And this is why it's important to create some sort of solution specific to what your goals are. We created a trademark process. It's known as the retirement diet plan, and it optimizes the key areas of financial planning to help accomplish your goal in any market environment. So many times individuals, they'll take this lump sum option and they'll just create a portfolio and just look at this nice shiny object, but they don't understand how to take the proper distribution strategies from this or to the proper income strategies from this, and then make sure that whatever's left over is growing on an effective route. Um, so they just have maybe a, you know one bucket, one portfolio, and call it a day and hope that they're not going to outlive their, their retirement income. What we did was we created a, a concise type of plan where DIET, the acronym of DIET, stands for D-I-E-T, distribution making sure that your income, your distribution and income need is covered using the smallest amount of dollars from your assets and only as much as necessary. The I stands for investment slash growth, meaning whatever you don't leverage for this distribution related strategy, how do you grow those ancillary dollars on an effective and efficient basis specific to your risk tolerance, but even more important to your risk capacity? Because we want to make sure that it's that your that your whole livelihood is not going to go to crap if you set up the plan the wrong way. Some people like that shiny object saying, oh, the market's going up. Let me just go and try to grow my monies, grow my monies, grow my monies. If that's going to negatively affect your overall you know, capacity to, to retire, well, then that might be you know, obviously a large problem. That's a, that's a large detriment. So this is where we really look underneath the hood and say, okay, if you're trying to leverage investments, how to do that the proper way, or you want to go more towards safety, safe accumulation, how do you leverage those sorts of accounts the proper way? The E stands for estate slash legacy planning. So let's say if you want to leave, uh, you know, monies to, or you want to create a type of uh, maximum legacy to your loved ones, how to do that effectively and efficiently, whether that's, you know, arbitraging certain accounts and certain product lines to produce that sort of legacy, or let's say if, you know, you don't have a will or a trust set up, how to make sure that that's established correctly. And then the T is for taxes. And this is really, you know, the crux of everything, you know, throughout retirement, you want to make sure that you're at least creating your, 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 your strategy in a tax efficient way. Because let's say if you're receiving $100,000 of income, but it's fully taxable and you're in a 30% tax bracket, well, that means that after, you know, that year, you're not going to be able to net that 100000 About 30% of it would have to go to taxes. You'll only be able to net $70,000. So is there a way to create tax-free strategies where you know maybe you're receiving $90,000 of income, but it's tax-free, meaning it doesn't matter what the tax bracket is, even if it's at a 30% tax bracket, if you're pulling out 90000 tax-free, you're going to be able to net 90000 tax-free. So you know, little, little nuances make such a large impact, such a large uh, you know, difference on what is going to be a successful plan versus what is going to be a plan uh, to, you know, to give somebody worry and give somebody panic and, and really scare the hell out of them throughout retirement. A quick example regarding the retirement diet plan in regards to this pension option, let's say if we do, we leverage this, you know, $1 million lump sum pension option, but we understand single or joint life would be giving this person right around $60,000, like I mentioned before. Well, the D okay, how do we create the proper distribution income strategy? Maybe out of this $1 million, we go and we utilize 500000 that's going to be placed into an IRA hybrid related annuity that still has, you still have control, still have flexibility on, but will produce you some sort of lifetime income stream through an income rider. So this sort of 500000 is going to produce that same $60,000 of cash flow. So this might be IRA number one. 
making sure that we're going with the top company, top contract specific to that individual's age, specific to you know when they want to wait for retirement. You know, all these little variables are are, are necessary. And if this individual, let's say, has expenses of eighty thousand dollars per year, and they're receiving twenty thousand dollars of social security income, well, that's where that sixty thousand dollar marker made mathematical sense to place it in there. Let's say if this person has $70,000 of expenses and they're receiving $20,000 of social security income, well, then we don't need to produce $60,000 of income. We'd only need to produce $50,000 of income because that's what the gap is. So you, know, you don't want to, you don't want to overstep. You don't want to overcommit to certain things if it's, if it's not necessary. So maybe instead of the $500,000 marker, if the, someone's trying to produce fi- uh, 50 grand, it might cost them 400,000 with IRA number one. And now they have over $600,000 left over for their investment slash growth planning need. And now this could be leveraged in, into a specific route. So maybe, you know, after looking at what their appetite for risk is and, and, and doing an analysis on their risk score, we understand that maybe 200,000 might want to be invested aggressively. 200,000 might want to be invested into fixed. 200,000 might want to be invested into safe accumulation or maybe, you know, 100,000 in safe accumulation. And then we're also leveraging $100,000 as some sort of, you know, emergency related need in case of a, a type of rainy day fund, or if they want to, you know, vacation more in their early years, you know, all those, those aspects. So really the, the crux of everything is making sure that you're creating your proper distribution strategy. And then also the ancillary dollars are, are uh, properly established on the, in, on the investment slash growth related need so that you're not biting off more than you could chew. You could, you could layer these things out properly and, um, you know, make sure that, that you're satisfied throughout retirement. And it really just comes down to optimizing your plan. Rather than having a portfolio, you want to focus in on a plan. Because a portfolio, if let's say someone's just setting up an investment portfolio, that individual is happy when the markets are going up, but they're pissed off and they're panicked and they're, they're terrified if the markets start going down. So we want to have a solution that accomplishes these goals. If the markets are going up, fantastic. Your plan is working. If the market goes down, fantastic. Your plan is working. If the market goes sideways, fantastic. Your plan is working. So you know, we just wanted to make sure to, to really optimize those key areas and show you, uh, you know, how it could be beneficial for your specific situation. So feel free, if you found this video interesting, uh, feel free to, to give us a call at our 1-800 number, 1-800-566-1002. You can also go to our website and schedule an appointment uh, directly uh, through our calendar link. It is uh, retiresharp.com. When you scroll over to our website, you'll notice this little you know Calendly link over here, and it could get you um, you know in, in touch with uh, a date and time specific uh, you know to your flexibility specific to wor- what works out best for your specific situation. But you know once again, DIET distribution, investment planning, estate planning, and tax planning. That's what we want to focus in on, making sure that that you're covering every little you know nook and cranny, every little basis to uh, you know to produce that successful retirement. Uh, once again, I want to thank you very much for watching this video. Um, please feel free to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Retire Sharp, so you can have access to the most updated videos. Thanks so much.